Well, that looks like there's a hair. <sighs> okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? All right, so I just finished Dan Coe's first call of solopreneur sprints yesterday. These were my takeaways. So first, let me say this is a paid course and I don't wanna give away too much information from a paid course. But the interesting thing is I've been following Dan for like a year or so now. He's one of my favorite online personality right now. And I think he's kind of a visionary for the future. He sees the way the internet is going and he realizes that basically there's a way that you can monetize your interests and just do something that you like in a small amount of time. And by doing so, you're helping yourself in the future. You're just basically building digital real estate, digital leverage. So I'll explain that. So the interesting thing is with Dan's content, like I'm saying, like I don't wanna give away paid information because I do think it's worth it for you to buy this course because I think it's good to have structure. But at the same time, like I've been watching Dan's videos for about a year and so what I've done recently over the past couple weeks is I went to all his videos and just sorted by oldest and started watching them. And the reason I did that was because I was like, all right, I wanna see what Dan's like first YouTube content was because I feel like the content that I would like to make and the content that he's made are very similar. Obviously he's doing it a lot better than I am, but I just like the way he just gets on a video, goes for like 20 minutes. Like it's like stream of consciousness, but not. Um, and I, I, I like that style, okay? So basically everything that we talked about and I learned in the video yesterday, like he's basically at some point given out for free. With the solopreneur sprints, the big thing that people are asking is like, what's my niche, what's my niche? Should I do this, should I do that? What about this topic, what about that topic? And they're asking someone else to validate their ideas, but what they really need to do is validate their own ideas. And the reason I say that is because it really just comes down to this. What is something that you've done in your life? What is something you've accomplished that you're proud of? And for me, I've had an accomplishment that I was working on for about 20 years where I could never get a six pack. And I was in pretty good shape for a long, long time, but I never could get to that last final push to get abs. I've been close a couple times, uh, but never really figured it out. But I went on a diet in August and just by implementing this diet and like following this process, I was able to get a six pack. And I'm like, okay, pro tip, make sure you check your batteries before you start recording a video. Okay, so all it really was is about a month away from hitting my goals. And so what I learned from that is basically it's a framework, okay? So my goal, I figured out the exact process that I did it and I'm pretty sure that I could help others do the same thing and it's something that I'm passionate about, which is fitness, okay? All right, so then once you figure that out, you then say, is this a common problem? Are there others suffering from this problem? And I mean, there's, I would say 99% of people, or guys, I should say, probably want a six pack. And so from there, you know that it's a common problem and you could help people solve it. Okay, so what are the ways that you do that? That's your next question, okay? Is it a common problem? Are you passionate about it? You've checked those two boxes. How could you help people solve that problem? Okay, so first, like, I don't have a big following. I only have less than 500 subscribers over like multiple platforms combined. So very small following, but okay, I've done this and I've taken something that I can get other people to do. I think that's a pretty good sale is like to say, hey, I can get you either a six pack or I can get you to the point of losing five to 10 pounds of fat in one month. Probably five is a realistic goal, uh, but that's still a decent amount. If you're losing five pounds of fat per month, like it's only a matter of time before you get a six pack. So the way I could do that is to start coaching people first, okay? So for coaching, I would say like a good amount that I would wanna charge would be like 250 bucks. And so for that coaching, I would offer a month long coaching for 250 bucks with four calls, one call every weekend or something like that. And so we're checking in, I'm giving them the frameworks to start and then we're going to follow up every single weekend on the process of what I've done, what I was successful on and how they're implementing that, how it's working for them. So you set like a measurable starting point for them and then you're checking in every single week and then you check in at the end, like to see what they accomplished and then if they wanna continue, if they have a further goal off of that or if they hit their goal. So you could start compounding that and 
you know, these calls could start as two people per weekend. They could go to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I think ten is even like, I think ten is ten to twenty is getting to the point where it'd be a little crowded. Uh, you know, so you might have to do multiple calls per weekend, but still each call could be like an hour. So you could do two, three, four calls. You could have up to, you know, 10 to 40 people per call, and then you're making 250 bucks per person per month by doing that. I'm pretty sure Jack Bly is one of the people who um, is doing something like that because he has a program called Default Kings, and I know he's been super successful getting people to commit. They charge a set amount, I think. I'm not for sure. You have to fact check me on that. But I like Jack. I like what they do, um, and I think that's what he's implemented as a process. And I actually learned from him one of the steps that really helped me is just like focus on your calories. Like if you're not calorie tracking, you're just guesstimating. It's like if you were running a business and you were like, hey, I think I sold this many things today. Hopefully I did, you know, that's what I'm gonna write down. But if you're actually tracking it, you see your numbers and all that stuff. Like you need to track your sales, you need to track your calories. If you track your calories and you're in a calorie deficit, it really doesn't matter as much if you eat ice cream and pizza, if you're 500 calories below your maintenance rate, you're going to lose a pound per week on average, okay? It's weird, but that's the nuts and bolts scientific matter of it. So anyway, that's an example, but so the coaching is one part, okay? And then your next part is like a digital product. So you could say, well, if 250 bucks per month is too much for you, that's fine. We, we do sell a 25 to $50 course and you can do everything yourself. You can learn it and then implement it, see if that works. If it doesn't work, you can always come back to coaching and try it with us. And you're gonna sell a lot more of the 25 to $50 products than you would the coaching most likely. But it's like if you have your coaching, then you have your digital products and both things are working together, slowly but surely you can get to a point where you're making you know, a few thousand bucks a month if not more. Okay, so you don't have a following, that's fine. If you're passionate about it, then you just start making content about it, okay? so your content is going to nurture people to get them into like following you and then be interested in what you have to offer, okay? So just because you don't have a following doesn't mean you can't make money. You can start with the coaching, but through coaching, through content, and then just continually doing those things, you can actually build up a following. And when you have more and more of a following, you can pull those people into taking your digital product or your coaching, and then it's actually just compounding on its own, okay? So you see what I'm saying here is starting to make sense. Once you get to a certain amount of following, if you do this for like one or two years, you're probably gonna be successful if it's something you're passionate about. Usually with things that you're passionate about, you over index and you're more likely to be successful. So if like, let's say you get to like 10,000 followers on Twitter, you can start being like an affiliate. You can get like a certain percentage. Like if you say, hey, these are the supplements that I'm using. If you wanna go buy them through this link, I would get a certain percentage. Or if you're making content like for YouTube, you can say, hey, this person's sponsoring the channel and then they're gonna give you a cut. Basically, all that is to say that this is digital economics, is you're taking something that you're passionate about and you have a few levers to pull and even if you don't have a big following, if you take something that you achieved, you develop a framework to solve it, what you did, and then you market that through content, reaching out to people, those types of things, slowly you can develop a following or do coaching. Both things are gonna work with each other and eventually you're gonna have enough money to make a certain amount of income. And as you do that more and more online, you're gonna build this digital real estate that's gonna be less and less work, I think, as you go on with time, where it's like, these things are gonna be running themselves, kind of. Like, you still have to do the coaching, but there could be a point where you don't even wanna coach anymore, and you're just making enough off your digital products, you could even raise your prices and say like, hey, I have 100,000 followers, I'm gonna charge 200 bucks for this course, or something like that. And then if you sell like 10 a day, or two per day, that's like 400 bucks to 2,000 bucks per day. Uh, which is pretty solid, okay? So that's digital economics. If Dan somehow sees this and like wants me to take it down, I totally would do that. I'm really not trying to do anything like wrong here with that. I'm just trying to explain what I've learned and if you really watch Dan's content, he explains all this stuff. Like he puts it out there, it's just up to you to aggregate that information. So that's how it made sense to me. I definitely would recommend you taking the course. I think I'm in the last cohort of the Solopreneur Sprints. So I don't know if that one will be available anymore, but you can get in Modern Mastery. 
Uh, that's like 27 bucks a month, five bucks for the first month. I'm not an affiliate, I'm just saying. Uh, I've done that one, I need to get back in it. And then the digital economics is, is more expensive. But I definitely think just start with Modern Mastery and then as you get time and you wanna have more experience, I think the good part is that it's a cohort, it's a group of people that are gonna support you with your journey too. You can make connections in Modern Mastery and see if there's ways that you can help each other. I think there's a lot of opportunity with this and that's my journey. I'm starting it out. I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching.